Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Designer. Today we're going to be installing and reviewing the helical cutter head from Fine by Tool, and this is for the Triton TPT125 thicknesser. I picked up this thicknesser a few weeks ago. Uh, Fine by Tool reached out to me and asked if I would like to review their helical cutter head for it, and I of course agreed because this is something I've been looking for uh, for this thicknesser. You'll see that thicknesses come in kind of like two ranges. You have the budget range, which usually has two or three straight blades. And then you have the more premium ones, which are around about double the price. This is about 400 and the ones with a helical or spiral cut here, they usually range from like 700 to 800. What's really cool about this is that these companies have started to make these helical cut heads for various different models. If you go onto the Fine By Tool website, you will see that they've got a, a huge range of spiral and helical cut heads for various different models and makes. So it's great because you can pick up these budget machines. I picked this up, I think it cost me 340 pounds. And you can pick these up secondhand, even cheaper if you find someone locally. I've seen them go for 200, 250 pound. And then obviously you can buy this from Fine By Tool. I believe it retails for around about 300 to 350, depending on the, the taxes and, and the shipping of whereabouts you're based. And you can, yeah, drop it in and you can turn it into a much better machine. Let's talk about the differences quickly between uh, a helical and a straight blade thicknesser. So the big selling point to me is probably going to be the maintenance and longevity of the cutter blades. With a straight blade, Obviously, if you damage one part of that blade, you need to replace the entire blade. Replacement blades, I think the genuine ones from Triton are £40 for a pair. You can get third party ones and they range from about 15 to 30 pounds for a pair of blades. So that can add up in cost quite quickly, especially if you plan to reclaim wood like what I do. I got quite a lot of pallet wood and I can get pallets very easily locally. And obviously you've got to be really careful that there are no nails or screws in the, the pallet wood when you run it through the thicknesser because yeah, one little chip and you need to replace it. Uh, I've actually damaged the blade on my hand plane from planing the pallet wood. I missed a screw and it's taken a nice big chunk out of the blade in that, so I do need to resharpen that. So with the helical cutheads, as you can see from the image, you have lots of individual carbide inserts in a helical pattern, which will cut the wood instead of just a straight blade. The benefit of this is that each carbide insert has four sides to it. So you, if you chip it or they get dull, you can just rotate it and you can just get a new blade essentially just from rotating it. So that's definitely gonna add a lot of longevity to the, to the blades what you can get and obviously the cost of replacing just a single insert is going to be much cheaper than just replacing uh, the entire blade there are a few other benefits you get a smoother surface finish although i've read that with a straight blade you do almost get a kind of like a burnishing which will give you maybe a slightly glossier or smoother finish compared to a helical cutter head it'll be interesting to compare the differences there is a reduction in noise these things run really loud so it'd be interesting to see if we do get a reduction in noise from that because that will be greatly appreciated Appreciated. And then also a helical cut head, it produces smaller chips, which could be a benefit in the dust extraction, depending on your setup. So before I install this, we are going to take some readings with the stock setup with the straight blades, and then we'll compare it against the helical cut head. There's a few things that I'm going to be looking at. I'm going to be looking at, of course, noise levels. I will be looking at the power consumption of the motor. We'll be measuring the watts that each of these blades generate. I've heard mixed things with a helical cutter head in terms of the power consumption. Some people say that it is reduced because you're not taking as, as wide of a cut in one go. The entire blade isn't just smashing down into the wood. You're getting more of a shearing cut across the wood because of the angle of the carbide inserts and also the fact that they are in a helical pattern. So some people say that you get a reduction in the power because there is less contact in the wood and the way that it's cutting. But then also I've heard reports of that actually the power consumption increases because there is a constant contact with the helical cut head and the wood. As it is spiraling, each blade individually is making contact. With a straight blade setup, especially if you've just got two blades, only at two times when it's spinning per revolution is it actually making contact with the wood. So it can actually build up its inertia a little bit better and therefore that is reducing the power consumption in the motor. From what I've read, I've also read that it could reduce the strain on the motor because as I said, the helical cut head is making that constant contact 
with the wood. With a two blade setup, it is kind of speeding up and then it's smashing down into wood and slowing down, speeding up and smashing down. Now I don't have any sort of power meter that is giving me actually like real time measurements to actually see those fluctuations in the watts. But yeah, I just thought I would kind of give that information to you because I was doing quite a bit of research on this and this is what I've kind of come to understand from reading on, on forums and, and, and Reddit. So we'll take the readings with the stock setup. What I wanna do next is show you the quick installation of this and then we'll go into the comparison. First, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, PCB Way. With state-of-the-art facilities to handle things like PCB etching, CNC machining, injection molding, and even 3D printing, PCB Way are committed to quality and affordable solutions for your PCB and manufacturing needs. PCB Way can handle it all from prototype to mass production. Visit PCBWay.com today and check out their very competitive pricing and turnaround times. So you first of all take off the side panels and the screw mechanism. And that will give you access to the main pulley. Now you're gonna to have to take off the dust shroud so you can get access to the blades. Best to take off the straight blades, first of all, just to make sure you don't cut yourself. And then you can take off the nut. This is a reverse thread, so just bear that in mind because I spent a long time trying to get the nut off by pulling it the other way. You can pry off the pulley and then you'll get access to the bearing housing. You've got a little key and a keyway for that. Need to make sure you put that to one side. That will allow you to then get off the electrical safety switch. And what I did is I just put an M6 screw back into the straight blade housing here and just hit it with a hammer to get it out. And then you can remove the main straight blade. And then it's time to just swap in the helical blade. So with the find by tool, you will get some nice NSK bearings, which are gonna be replacement. You wanna hammer out the old bearings, but you wanna keep that bearing housing, because you need that. You also wanna take off this spline shaft, which is just threaded onto the straight blade housing. You then put on the bearings. I put the entire helical head into the freezer, just to freeze it, and so it will shrink, and it will just make it a little bit easier to get these bearings on. Put back in the key, and then you can fit back in the helical head. It's best to put the blades on once you've installed it, not before you've installed it, because you've just got more chance of cutting yourself. And then it's just a case of putting everything back on. Putting on the nut, putting on the electrical safety switch, putting back in the threaded rod, and this will connect to the bottom sprockets fit the housing, put back on the side panels. So it's a pretty easy installation. I think with just a few hours and just some basic tools, you can probably get these things off. The only difficult thing is probably gonna be the bearings, getting them off. If you've got a bearing puller, I'd recommend buying one of those from Amazon. You can pick them up for like 10, 15 pounds. It's just gonna make it a bit easier to get those bearings off. Next, let's jump into the sound test. This is just a before and after with the straight blade and the helical blade. And I've reduced the volume a little bit just so it doesn't deafen you, but you should get an idea of the readings. So there are the results. Not a night and day difference, if I'm being honest. Uh, taking a look at the sound readings, I couldn't really see much difference. Regardless when you're using this machine and it's on, you know, it's hitting the high 80s, even 90 decibels. So I think regardless, you, know, you need ear protection when, when you're using a machine like this. So the helical blade didn't really do anything uh, in terms of reducing the noise. I think the reason being is that with this model, probably most of the noise is coming from the motor. I think if you had something with a quieter motor, I know that the Makita is probably one of the quietest ones out there. I think if you probably swapped in the blade for that, you may hear the difference, but with this budget model, this, this motor absolutely screams regardless of the blade. I got my VersaFlow helmet with, with my ear defenders on and that's what I'm using all the time when I'm using this machine. So that is a little bit annoying. I was hoping for a reduction in noise, especially uh, just to help out the neighbors when I'm using this machine. I have seen other reviews. They did actually record quite a drop in the decibels when they're using a the straight blade compared to the helical. I'm not sure why I didn't see that, but yeah, we didn't see any reduction in noise. Looking at the surface finish, again, uh, you know, 
I, I did not see the kind of massive improvement in surface finish that I've heard you know, other people saying. To be honest with you, just at a quick glance and to touch the straight blade, actually feels smoother. I think that you know you do get that slightly more glossy finish with the straight blade. With a helical you do get a little bit more of a of a matte finish. And just to touch, I can always tell just from touch what is the straight blade and what is the helical because the helical just has a slight very slight fuzziness to it. Whereas the uh, the straight blade it feels a little bit more a little bit more smoother. But to be honest with you, there's very little between them. I would say that the helical is definitely an improvement in the surface finish when you're using maybe softer woods or lighter woods that show the scallop marks. So I've got some like you know pine pallet wood here, uh, and you can really see the difference in surface finish here. The scallop marks are are quite visible with the straight blade. If you was making a big project with this, uh, you know you'd probably have to do quite a lot of work to get rid of those scallop marks. With the helical, you know, there is you, there is no artifacts from the thickness in. It just needs a sanding down, you know, probably a, a 240 or a 320, and that is perfect to go. This would probably require a little bit more work just to get out those scallop marks. On maybe a darker wood and a little bit more of a varied grain, something like the Iroco, you cannot see a difference between the finishes. It's really only in some of the lighter woods or where you've got a little bit more of a consistent grain. Again, you can see the scallop marks quite visible here in, in this cedar, for instance. When you got it, pick it up in the light, you can really see the scallop marks. With the helical, I mean that there is nothing. It looks like a, a nice plain surface. In some cases, I've, I would definitely prefer the helical to the straight blade. I think you could probably get away with not sanding some of the wood types with the straight blade. But with the helical to the touch, every single one just does feel just a tiny bit fuzzy. So they would all definitely require a sanding uh, after you have thickness it. With power consumption, I didn't really see too much difference again. The straight blade peaked at 1900 watts and the helical cutter peaked just below that. I think it was about 1867 watts. So they're very, very close. And honestly, there's not much difference in the power consumption between the two cutter blades. With the chips that you get from the different heads, they are definitely different. They kind of reflect the surface finish. The, the chips that you get with the straight blade, they do look a little bit more shinier um, and they are a little bit more longer and they've got that kind of scallop shape to them. The helical chips, they are a little bit more fuzzier and smaller. So that would definitely be beneficial, I think, for the dust extraction. But with a lot of these models, you're usually hooking them up to a two and a half inch, which is what you get with the Triton, or most of them come with a four inch dust hose and I don't really expect there to be any issues with you know dust evacuation when you're hooking this up to a proper dust extractor with a four inch hose. Yeah it's, I think smaller chips are probably better for dust collection which could be beneficial in some cases. So as I said where this will really shine and I can't really test that in this review today is probably the longevity and the maintenance of these blades. As I said if you chip a straight blade you need to replace the entire thing with this, you've got the carbide inserts. With the fine by tool package, you do get a few spare inserts that come with it. But yeah, you've got you know four sides to each carbide insert, which is going to really drastically increase the longevity of each of those blades. Installation was very easy as well. So I would say overall, you know, I'm very pleased with the cutter. I think the quality of the cutter is very, very good. Packaging is very nice. I've got really no issues with it. Hopefully this gives you some realistic expectations of what to expect when you when you buy this. If you've got any questions on this cutter head or the Triton TPT125, uh, put them in the comments below. If you found this review useful, please remember to like and subscribe. It really does help to tell YouTube to share this to a wider audience, which will be beneficial to me and my channel and what I do here. But that is it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you later.